Hi, I'm Sean and I love music. Welcome to What's Spinning where we take a look over what I've been streaming and what new albums I have added to my collection over the months of May and July. May and July? June and July is what I should have said there. So um, there's lots of music to get through so let's just fire into it and stick around to the end of the video where I'll be giving away one of the albums that I'll be talking about today. First of all, what new music I've been listening to via streaming services and there's a lot and it's all very very good. First up, Visions of Collapse by Liminal Shroud. Victorious, impeccably performed and immaculately produced black metal. From Canada! It's epic, it's sumptuous, it's symphonic and it's highly addictive. I particularly enjoy both the drumming and the vocals on this. It's just so righteous and victorious and oh, it's just it's delicious. You should highly, highly give it a go. First song from Winter Phyllis, forthcoming album The Imperious Horizon, Dishonour and Thrones. Sweeping and majestic black metal from England. The lads from Winter Phyllis definitely sound like they have another winner on their hands with this album. A twistingly imperious tremolo led slice of black majesty. The full album is coming out the 13th September, I've already got it pre-ordered and you should pre-order it too. Next up, Tides of Triumph by Leonoka. Um, I don't think it's a, it's a new album, but it's certainly one that I've just discovered this month. It's grim, it's raw, and it's groovy Native American black metal. It's indigenous black metal with a real ear for a classic raw black metal melody. If you liked Black Braid, but you kind of wish they were a bit rougher around the edges, then absolutely Leonoka is the band for you. They currently have two albums on Bandcamp, so definitely go and support those guys. Next up, a genre change, All Things Shining by O Hiroshima. Towering fractal soundscapes and thundering beauty from the boys in O Hiroshima. It is a monstrous and delicious bit of post-rock. Sparkling and hummable melodies welded with ocean heavy grooves and thunder. They have crafted something truly special with this album. I would say if you're a fan of bands like Pelican or The Ocean, then these guys are for you. Sumptuous and Shining. From their forthcoming album, Every Bridge Burning, Nails come back with a Give Me The Painkiller. It's aggressive, murderous, brutal, blackened, grimy grindcore, just the way your daddy used to make. Utterly ruthless and weaponized to destroy him. Sickeningly heavy with a real punk edge to it. And now with screaming guitar solos, which is equally awesome. This is due for release on August 30th and I cannot wait. Nails never fail to deliver. Another neck breaking genre change as we get into hyper drama by Justice. Sleek, funky, digital brilliance from the duo Injustice. Channeling gritty digital cyberpunk soundscapes with sweeping classical arrangements almost like Daft Punk. These guys have a real ear for a cracking melody and a storming beat. I've really been enjoying this album particularly when I don't feel like listening to something utterly brutal or blackened. You should absolutely give it a try. Cracking album. And my latest musical obsession, Strike Again, Canon in Fever, with two new songs from their forthcoming album, Panzer Henker and Mention Mule from Die or Catastrophe. That is a absolutely amazing album title. It's a double barrage of mud street terror, slamming grooves, tremolo scything and harrowing World War One imagery. The band possess that rare, rare ability to take a, a, a real earworm and weld it with some brutal metallic assault. Brutal tremolos, big blast beats, shrieking vocals, it is. They are, both tracks are wonderful. Get in the trenches and prepare for the bombardment on the 20th of September. I've got this album pre-ordered. You should go pre-order it as well. These guys deserve all the love they can get. And I've added quite a few records to the collection over the past two months, starting with a couple of bucket list items. You may remember that May was Melodic Death Metal Month and I was talking about so many classic albums that I didn't own that I had to go <laughs> and purchase a good few of them. And the first of them is a bona fide classic, Slaughter of the Soul by the mighty At The Gates. <laughs> this is a complete and utter melodic death metal classic. I don't really think I need to pour any more hyperbole onto this album than doesn't already exist. And look at this pressing. This is wonderful. This is an amazing pressing. This was my one purchase for Record Store Day this year and I am so, so chuffed with it. Um, that Slaughter of the Soul by At The Gates. You know it, you love it, absolutely. 
another band and another album I talked about loads during Melodic Death Metal Month was Darkane and their album Expanding Senses and um, this was one of my favourite melodic death metal albums back in the day um, and, and very very pleasing white pressing which is thematically very <laughs> on point. Um, I feel that Darkane didn't get the love that they absolutely deserved and this album is totally brutal. Um, I remember when I first saw the video uh, for Innocence Gone I was totally hooked it's just so massive and there's so many classics on this album as well um, but they never seem to reach the heights of bands like At The Gates or Carcass. If you have the time go and check out Expanding Senses by Darkane. It is such such a good record and has all the good things about 90s early 2000s melodic um, death metal. An album I think I'll take some flack for for not already owning was The Mighty Heartwork by Carcass. I've just never, never owned it, like absolutely love it, just never thought to buy it until I did Melodic Death Metal Month and all those good memories came back. This is a double colour pressing of a green and a white vinyl um, and check that etching, that is absolutely amazing. You all know the story, Carcass were a grimy, gritty, biology obsessed <laughs> death metal band um, prior to this and then with Heartwork they really laid down the foundation of what melodic death metal was to sound like in years afterwards. It is such a stone cold classic. Every single track in this is absolutely fantastic. The performances are amazing. Production is like you, you can hear what Carcass are doing which is amazing. I absolutely love this record and um, I am appalled at myself that I didn't own it earlier. That's Heartwork by Carcass. Go and grab yourself a copy if you don't already. Mwah, delicious! Taking a bit of a jaunt away from melodic death metal, we have Once by Nightwish. This is my favourite Nightwish album. I'm always looking for uh, purchases of albums that I don't own yet that are potentials for the albums that made me and this is absolutely one of them. Um, I do believe it was me, my dad and my sister who all got into this album around about the same time and it's such such a good album. It's a good fantastic bit of European symphonic folk metal. This is gorgeous. This is absolutely amazing. Probably got the, some of the band's most recognisable songs on it. Um, for example, Nemo. Everybody knows Nemo. Everybody <laughs> loves Nemo. And uh, we all know the drama that happened after. Despite its commercial success, despite the rave reviews and despite the massive tours that followed, um, Tarja left the band after that and then they went through an odd period of trying to find another singer and not being particularly successful until they located Fleur Jansen who is an absolute goddess. This album for me is the quintessential Nightwish album. That's Once by Nightwish. Really lovely. Absolutely brilliant. Next up, another band that I really feel didn't get the love they deserved back in the day but absolutely a band and an album that put me on the beeline path towards technical death metal and progressive metal, The Hinderers by The Mighty Dath. I was obsessed with this record when it first came out. Breathtakingly technical, Assault on the Senses. And then they vanished for a bit afterwards. I know they've got like other albums but they vanished for a wee bit afterwards and it was kind of like a, a wee bit of a fear of are they going to be a one hit wonder. I can see that they're doing more music now but this album, this this album is just so so good. Every song is full of barmy ideas, exceptional performances, some really guttural growly vocals and, and yeah I just cannot say enough good things about The Hinderers. Um, it's such a good album. Um, it's just been repressed recently which is how I've gotten this so if you're even the slightest bit interested in fantastic technical progressive death metal then give Dath a go. Dath metal! Dath metal! Another album from my childhood which recently got repressed and one that I was absolutely obsessed with and could not get when it was re-released is The End of All Things To Come by Mudvayne. I was obsessed with Mudvayne when I was younger. I liked LD50, LD50 is a great album. Everybody loves a bit of the bird bird ding. But yeah, this this was the one that cemented my obsession with Mudvayne. It's such a good record. Conceptually, performance-wise, it is just, it's wonderful. I think it kind of saw them step out from that kind of, they're, they're kind of like, oh, they're baby Slipknot, into being their own entity. Wrong progressive themes, really wonderful performances. Um, the the production is absolutely stellar, really bassy, really thick, um, absolutely amazing. This will always be a quintessentially fantastic record to me. That's it, the end of all things to come by the Mighty Mudvayne, so so good. 
Hey man, people's assertions that you can't be a hardcore metalhead and like Shania Twain don't impress me much. Yep, it's Shania Twain is coming over. So, um, for those who don't know, Shania Twain was performing at Glastonbury recently. Um, and there was obviously a big swelling of interest in Shania Twain and there was a lot of documentaries on before it. And me and my wife decided to watch one one evening because you know what, Shania, Shania Twain, everyone likes Shania Twain. And all the way through, it was going through Shania Twain's history and going through all her back catalogue and like, classic songs that didn't get much radio playing stuff and we came to realize that i knew all of shania twain's songs <laughs> and my wife then asked me the very fine question sean do you like shania twain and after a bit of soul searching i have to admit i like shania twain <laughs> and yeah this is the album that starts it all i remember when this first came out my mother purchased it um yeah and it was on pretty much constantly for i think it was a good like six month period Every single song on this album is ingrained into my head to such a severe degree that I cannot hear those first seven notes without reacting to it. Let's go girls. But yeah, it's a, it's a smashing bit of classic pop rock country um, that I simply can't deny. You know what? Should I tween? Fucking awesome. Come on over my should I tween? It is wonderful. And getting things back on topic um, and my never ending quest to own every single album Enslaved have done on vinyl, we have Below the Lights by Enslaved. I've been waiting for a really good copy of this, like I own the majority of Enslaved's records already, but I've been waiting to get really really good copies of the ones that I don't have and this was one that I was like, I really want to get a really nice pressing of this album. That is, that is gorgeous, that is delicious. They are fantastic progressive black metal with a strong classic Norse culture vibe. They're just, they're so so good and Below the Lights is one of the albums that saw them take that really hard left turn into progressive music away from the raw black metal. I love this like I love pretty much everything Enslaved put their name to. For me they're a band that can genuinely do no wrong and this album is, is such a fantastic slice of their history uh, but this album is wonderful. That's Below the Lights by Enslaved. And now for new releases that I picked up this month, we'll start off with High on Fire's Cometh the Storm. Uh, Matt Pike in his Merry Men return with another opus of granite heavy, stoner infused, grimy metal. It is heavy, it is fantastic. Slight progressive twinge which I really really like. Matt Pike is an absolute god and the boys in the band have come back with another stormer of an album. Absolutely fantastic. That's Cometh the Storm by High on Fire. Check it out. <laughs> Hey, hey guy, Dark Throne have got a new album and it's great. It beckons us all by Dark Throne. This is, this is wonderful. Dark Throne continue their never ending quest to simply not give a fuck about any kind of genre convention whatsoever. They've now travelled from the murky, murky um, depths of doom metal and punk and black metal and whatever the hell they've been doing in the past to make a almost Voivod-esque journey into Cthulhu-esque madness. It's, it's really, really brilliant. And it's so keeping within character for Dark Throne to simply go, hey, what did we do last album? Let's not do that again. Let's do something completely different. Like, as soon as you notice the Voivod influence, you're like, my God, this is like, this is like the black metal album that Voivod <laughs> never made. Fenris, Nocturnal Culto. Guys, keep doing what you're doing. It's absolutely fantastic. Fucking love it. <laughs> That's it, Beckons Us All by Dark Throne. Such a wonderful album. Fantastic. <laughs> this album cover is also absolutely something else. It is wonderful. You may not be aware of this, but I am a big Godzilla fan. And recently, a film was released called Godzilla Minus One. And it was absolutely bloody amazing. As was the absolutely devastating soundtrack as well. By Naoki Sato, this is a wonderful, kind of classic feeling Godzilla soundtrack. Um, I know that with Shin Godzilla, there was a lot of reliance on previous like suites and soundtracks, which is totally fine. But this is like fantastic brand new music uh, for Godzilla Minus One. The film is exceptional and a big part of that is the soundscape that it develops. Look at this, look, look, look at this, look at the gold in this pressing. That is just absolutely wonderful. I was so happy when uh, they announced that they were releasing this, got it instantly pre-ordered when they mentioned it and it just arrived this month and having listened to it a couple of times now I can, I can attest that separate from the film it is just a wonderful suite of breathtaking music. Naoki Sato, Godzilla minus one official soundtrack, absolutely brilliant. Look, like, oh, look, look, the big man. Oh, it's so good. 
I'm a big lover of like epic films and Dune and Dune Part 2 are perhaps some of my favourite most recently released films. I actually think that it's up there with Lord of the Rings, Godzilla and uh, Star Wars. Like Dune and Dune Part 2 combined is just such an epic cinematic experience. Big part of that due to the soundscape developed by the one and only Hans Zimmer who I'm a wee bit of a fanboy for. Got the special edition of the first Dune soundtrack in a trip to Edinburgh. I just found it in a, a friendly record store and then when they announced that they were doing the second special edition for Dune part 2 I knew I simply had to get it so I could own the set. This is a breathtaking soundtrack for anyone who's heard like Paul's Dream, Travel South, The Emperor, anything like that, you know that this is a phenomenally crafted and well thought out suite of music. And when put in like addition to the soundtrack for the first part, it's just one of the most epic sweets of music I can think of. This is such, such a good record. I cannot say enough good things about Dune. Everything about it is incredible, including the soundtrack, and I absolutely love this fantastic box set that they put it in. You can get your hands on this, absolutely. That's Dune Part 2 soundtrack by Hans Zimmer. Can't say enough nice things about it. Next up, maybe I'm not quite as well-known band or musical at its glassing and from the other side of the mirror, a bit of wonderful, angular, atmospheric black metal. Think of bands like Maul or Death Heaven or something similar to that, um, Agriculture as well. If modern black metal takes your fancy in any way, you should definitely check out glassing. However, if you're looking for that, um, I just crawled out of a cave in the middle of Norway and I have some problematic opinions about people's ancestry, then, abs then don't give those guys a go, they're not for you. Next up is a release I've had on pre-order for quite a while and it's finally arrived. That is Beyond the Palest Star by Vorga. Some epic sci-fi themed technical uh, black metal with strong, strong bits of progressive death as well. And look at this pressing, it is absolutely fantastic. These guys are inventive, crazy good at what they do. Every song is so brutally addictive and sweepingly epic and um, I absolutely love this. Look at this, the foil shine on this, ooh, very, very cool, very sci-fi. Um, I actually have um, a digital copy of this album to give away, so stick around until the end of the video to find out how you can get Get that. Next up was the album that I thought was going to be my album of the month, but then something happened to totally make that not happen. It is Le Chon de Lorore by the mighty Alcest. Everybody knows who Alcest are. They are pretty much the inventors of the whole post atmospheric black gay genre. Alcest are absolutely bloody gorgeous. Like their music is sumptuous and warm, victorious and life affirming. And this album continues that trend. It is such a wonderful, wonderful set of songs. They're so well crafted and performed. And I, I just can't say enough good things about this album. Alcest, I feel, are one of those bands that they consistently deliver. Like they, they'll, they'll never ever release something that doesn't ever meet their doesn't meet their high standards and this is another absolutely phenomenal release in their career so far and again it just makes me it makes me happy to see where Alcest go next they are just so majestic and brilliant and I absolutely love them that is Lechon de Lorore by the mighty Alcest and it takes quite a release to keep Alcest off the top spot but um, this last album of the month absolutely absolutely just blew me away the first time I heard it. Forgive my French pronunciation, it is not the best. Yell, Ciel Cendré, it's Misery Noir. I hope that's how it's pronounced. By how this is fantastic Parisian nautical themed black metal. It's amazing. It's just so good. I talked last episode about Dodgera and how they were just this majestically epic black metal band and um, how tick all those boxes as well. But instead of being themed around snow and nights and deep forest, this is nautical horror. This is mankind's struggle against the ocean given personification. It is, it, it's bloody wonderful. Also got myself a shirt. Woo! Love it. This is a fucking phenomenal album and I highly recommend that you go and check the band out. Go chuck all the love and money at them. They absolutely deserve it. And as mentioned guys, I've got a bit of a giveaway. Um, I have a digital copy of Vorga's Beyond the Palest Star to give away. All you have to do is three things. Give me a subscribe, 
give this video a like and tell me down below what new music you've been listening to this month. As ever guys, it's been wonderful speaking to you, hope you're all doing well. Let me know down in the comments below if there's any other bands or albums I should be checking out. Give this video a like if you please and give me a wee subscribe. But guys, take care, be groovy, be kind and I will see you all on the next video. Cheers. Let's go girls.